Hello, everybody, and welcome to Encounters USA with author Matthew Hines. If you're looking for alien incidents, Bigfoot brouhaha's, or dogman dealings, we have the podcast interviews, field research, and field interviews you're gonna love. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube and check us out on Patreon. Now, on with the show. All right, so Rich, uh, with your law enforcement experience and perspective, we're talking about what happened to George Floyd. And we're going to get into kind of the, the conspiracy behind it, the circumstances behind his death. And um, this is post my going off about um, how they are honoring this guy by mm -hmm. um, replicating how he was killed. So yeah. uh, the first thing that I would like to ask you is from a law enforcement perspective, what did, what's your take on, on that arrest and how he, was, how he was murdered? Well, from my understanding of the whole thing is that... Uh, Chavez in the group that encountered him later. So anyways, I'll just start here. I look at the video. I've seen a bunch of different videos from different angles and stuff. There's a lot of question into this thing. Um, a lot of skepticism, I would say now, even more so in this one than any of the other ones that we've seen over the years. Uh, for a lot of different reasons. I can tell you that from a tactical and a law enforcement perspective, I don't see anything in that video that was standard police procedure from any part of it whatsoever. Uh, I don't even know what they were doing. It looked like a hit job to me from some organized crime. Um, well, can, can I just jump in here? Cause I, I have, I might post this on my Deceptions of the Ages channel, but I, I follow this stuff. I follow it for my campaign. I follow it for another one of my YouTube channels. And, and um, so it doesn't really have anything to do with Bigfoot, mm -hmm. but it does have to do with the government conspiracy. And this is one of the biggest ones I've seen. So when I investigated it, there is Nuevo Rodeo, who, which is the restaurant. The restaurant is owned by a guy who bribed, was convicted of bribing uh, an official back in 2001. And he got out of prison after his sentence, but he got out because he was going to be an informant, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. So Nuevo Rodeo, the restaurant um, that was involved in this supposed money laundering scheme, uh, this is the one where uh, this, uh, whatever his name is, and Floyd worked at. Chavez. Ch Ch okay. Chavez, whatever you call him. Yeah. So they worked um, at this place, and according to what happened, this guy tried to pass a $20 fake bill. They called the cops. Two cops came down, and um, he was sitting in the driver's seat of the car, and they started talking to him. He didn't want to get out, but finally he did, and they handcuffed him. Then they said, Chauvin is his name. They said, this guy's gonna come and pick you up. And the guy went crazy. The guy said, no, no, he's not coming. When he was with these other cops, he was fine with that. But he freaked out when this so other guy came. Because he, yeah, he, like he knew, I know what's gonna mm -hmm. happen because I did something they're gonna kill me for. And um, so then, and, and, and I'm gonna let you comment in a minute, but for me to have a guy in, in public execute somebody like that, look at 9-11. Yeah, I mean it's it's a public horror psychological yeah. uh, psyop that it's going to freak people out and it's going to get people to react in a well, certain way. I tell you way. what. So you tell me yeah. what do you think will happen? You know, I really like this word and I use it a lot, but it really looks like a criminal conspiracy to me. I don't know. I mean, it looks like that that we have that we have probably some sort of government that's engaged in this thing to push some sort of an agenda to, to get people to um, rise up and to uh, cause a race war to happen. Look at now, California, we've had two young black men hanging from trees and uh, down in uh, California. And um, at first, one of them, the cops said that it was a, uh, looked like a suicide, but then the family challenged and it clearly looked like homicide. So what you have, it looks like to me in this scenario, somebody is taking black people, hanging them in trees to try to incite more violence to try to get this to fucking catch on. Because yeah. guess what? You got 
South Central Los Angeles and all these gang members on the California coast. Mm -hmm. You get these people pissed off yeah. and ready to start driving around wasting white people in rich neighborhoods, you really can get something going then. Yeah. Right? I think that's what we got going on here. I mean, you have to look at the big picture from a tactical perspective and you got to look at each one of these events and what they yeah. signify. And you look at, do you think some black person now is going to go hang himself in a tree? Probably not because he's going to be thinking about what it's going to look like. And he's probably not, but I guarantee you that somebody who wants to agitate and push an agenda yep. is going to go out and lynch some black people right now yep. for an agenda and go hang them in trees and then say, oh, look, some white supremacists did this. Yep. Oh, look, look. And then you're going to infuriate this huge population of gang members. Yeah. And there you go. Was any of those guys Jesse Smollett? That was hanging. No, was but, I know that's not funny. No. But you know, he could have been taking that. Well, Smollett's in big trouble. The, the Smollett thing leads to a lot of different things. They're going to find out his connections and what, um, why he did what he did, and how that was all set up and paid for, yeah. and who did the, who influenced prosecutors in that. And I think you're going to see that goes back to some very high levels in the Democratic Party. Yeah. Um, very clear where it goes. Phone records are going to end up being released on that, and a bunch of other stuff. And I think you're going to see some indictments come from that of elected officials, probably. Yeah. Well, okay, so, yeah, I, okay, so from law, the law enforcement perspective of doing an arrest, would you ever put your knee on somebody's throat? I'll tell you, in fact, that I was a cop for 15 years, and I started my law enforcement career in, like, 1998. And I can tell you back in 1998 that we were already being trained to not uh, do any type of constriction to the neck. No knees to neck, no nothing. It was against policy back then. So I don't even know what it's about now and why it's coming up and why it's happening because at least in every place I ever worked for the last 20 years of exposure, that has been something you don't do. And I started working out for the Department of Defense and was trained by the Department of the Navy. Mm -hmm. uh, and we went through military style riot training and stuff and we did not put pressure on the neck even there. Mm -hmm. So. I don't know where all this shit's coming from or why are there's a, oh, you got to ban neck restraints and all this stuff now and choking. We never did that shit. Yeah. That was never the way you did it. I see it on TV now, but I don't know why it's happening because it was never, you were, you were never supposed to do it anyhow. Mm -hmm. That's what my take is. So that's another strange thing that I've noticed out of this. Of how come something we've never did now is saying, oh, you used to do this and they're giving all these examples because we never did that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I'll tell you the truth about cops, you know, I don't even like them. So yeah. that's straight up. Yeah. Well, I don't, for me, it's not that I don't like cops. It's that they have the power of real, really life and death over you. Mm -hmm. I mean. Well, the problem is and, most of them don't even realize. And one, <laughs> one of the things that I, I, I you know, I'd, I'd like to share with people that grew up in the city is that you are, you Democrats keep voting for more government. And that means more cops. So I grew up in a small town where I was like the biggest hellion in town in school. Yeah. We had like one or two cops. They knew me by name. And when I was out, they caught me doing stuff. They just take me home yeah. or they call my mom. Well, same no, thing happened in the 90s. But I mean, there's no record. There's no, yeah. you know, it's, it doesn't stay with you for life. But for these young black kids and, and you know, when I went down to uh, Seattle and was talking to some of these people, it was very enlightening. I talked to one girl who got busted for weed in New York. It's legal here, and it ruined her life, you know? Um, yep. Uh, I, um, but, it, but these other black guys are going, yeah, but, you know, if you get um, arrested in the city, that's it, it's, it's a federal case. You know, it's not, mm -hmm. oh, we're gonna send you home. That's never the case. You're going to jail. And for me, um, I, I don't even wanna go into my personal experience with this just a, a few months ago, but um, the, the, to me, it's the, it's the cops are a dragnet and every community has a legal system that basically has a net out to catch people doing the crap that people do. Right. And then they yeah. arrest them and they're stuck in the system. They have to pay thousands of dollars they can't afford. They lose their jobs, they lose their homes, they lose their families. Yeah. One of the things that I would do is I would change these DWI laws because everybody's out drinking, there has to be another way to do this, but to tag somebody with a $5,000 fine and ruin their life, no. not let them drive, not let them have a job, uh, you're, I gotta say you're so. killing them. So. Well, I, I mean, obviously since I was a cop for so long and, and the way that I think about stuff, I have a perspective related to the criminal justice system and all that. I, I did everything that I could do in law enforcement. I was a detective, I did patrol, I worked major cases, uh, 
SWAT team, so I had all the tactical stuff, and I did it all long enough to be real proficient at all of it. So, one thing that I realized through the through my time is doing it is that it was futile for the most part. Um, that it was a uh, law enforcement has turned into a, a private for-profit business. Yep. And, and so what has occurred that we have this system of prisons, both state and private and federal, right? And, and, and there is a formula to keep those prisons at certain capacity or above capacity at all times. Mm -hmm. And so what you see is that every part of this world, you mentioned DUIs and domestic violence, it has built its own separate economy associated with it that needs to be fed. Mm -hmm. And so you have a problem now where the people have decided that they were going to give their own power over to this government authority, right, to go ahead and look out for their specific interests. But the problem is, is this government authority, which is the justice system now, has created a situation that it's dependent on a certain amount. So it has mm -hmm. to make sure to sustain itself, right? So now the people aren't being looked out for any longer. It's only looking out for itself now, mm -hmm. right? But now it's all become inefficient and it, and it can't move forward on its own any longer it's collapsing so something's going to change related to it i mean there's a reason why the united states per capita has more people incarcerated than any other country in the world right and and that we're the freest society and you know the fact is is i'd like to bring something else up which i think is one of the greatest injustices in this country is related to the second amendment and the fact that if you're a convicted felon that you lose your gun rights well who says that after you've paid your debt to society, that mm -hmm. you should be punished forever and you should lose your constitutional rights and freedoms guaranteed by God. Mm -hmm. Because I don't understand that at all. That's a huge injustice that you're, 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 you're plastering on these people and you're, you're, you're discriminating against them for the rest of their life mm -hmm. because they made a mistake and, they, and then when they paid their debt, you don't, you don't give them back their rights. They're permanently gone. Right. Voting, too. I mean, I can see both sides of that, but definitely gun rights. I don't see that's a that is a paramount American right to own firearms yeah. and to be able to have the right to bear those arms and defend yourself. And um, you should that it shouldn't be arbitrarily taken from anybody, yeah. criminal or not. Or if you pay your debt to society, that should be returned. But going back to, you know, this whole situation now, we built this huge beast that has to be fed with this system that looks out for itself. and. Clearly, you know, my experience in law enforcement, it's a two or even three tier system where you have different levels for different people and different and you're treated differently at each one of those levels, depending on your status, you know, and it can go beyond there because I've witnessed, you know, people like Bill Gates, where he can come into a situation because he owned uh, uh, a lot of property in Mason County. We had a lot of dealings with um, his estate. I didn't have dealings with him personally, but I know a lot of people I worked with had and he was the one guy that can go in anywhere without an appointment and just go right in and barge in mm. and just start making demands and if he doesn't get what he wants heads roll right and that's always the the way he was and i had heard many stories from law enforcement about him and even in my own agency that that's how the guy is right mm. versus you go down to the the tweaker down the street who is deemed not credible and to be subhuman and he's treated as such. Mm -hmm. So you have this different level and this discrepancy. And then you have the guys who are the friends of the, the local politicians who their kids get to skate on everything, right? So, all right, well, so let's, let's stop saying. there. And I, I agree with a lot of the stuff you're saying, but okay, so I live over in Redmond, right? Yeah. Bill Gates country, Microsoft country. Yeah. And um, the other day, uh, like a few months ago, I videotaped a tank like an armored personnel carrier, right? Yeah. Uh, attached to the police department. So no. what's, <laughs> what, why do they need, and this is pre-coronavirus. Well, I'll tell you what's... So why do they need, in Redmond, Washington, yeah. which is all Microsoft employees, why do they need a tank? And and when we start talking about this, um, my, my point is that um, being ex-military, when I see cops dressed like freaking you know uh delta force mm -hmm. uh, why are you dressed like delta force you're a public servant are you going into combat is somebody shooting at you or are you just trying to intimidate people well. and 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 also having been uh you know overseas i would sit in these um security briefings like for private companies for like north of grumman and um these guys would say how dangerous it is right and they'd get you all hyped up and, oh, you can get killed this way and you get killed that way. Well, by the time you go actually go out, you're also 
hyped up, you're going to just waste the first person that looks at you the wrong way. Pretty much. So I think that, you know, when the, on, the, on the law enforcement argument, number one, I do think it's a dragnet, and what you're saying is exactly right. It's for profit. You never see poor people in court. When you go to court, if you're rich, you just send your lawyer. Mm -hmm. Everybody else in court is poor. But I think that, um, and I, I'm glad that the, these people stood up. And they did this just because it's gotten out of hand. Mm -hmm. The police have become their own military force, and they think I have life, power of life and death over you. And no. I know not all cops no. don't aren't like that. Well, that's not what I'm saying. I, I'm, I'm going to explain to you why when this all has happened is militarizing the police and creating this situation where we live in this police state, you know, where you're basically trying to change the people's mindset and what is acceptable to them and just move you into a different era. But I'll tell you that the people are the ones who demanded this and they're the ones who gave up their power and handed it over to this and said, go ahead and do it. And they they have, and I'm telling you, your elected officials are the ones that are pushing all this stuff and allowing it to happen. They've militarized the cops. They have, they have yeah. connected the cops with the Barton of Defense so they can get all this free equipment from them. Yep. They can get all these uh, surplus weapons. They can get all these surplus uh, military vehicles, yeah. right? And it's all free, yeah. right? And, and then they they get these grants where they can buy these things called MRATs that are these fucking armored fortresses that can just drive through a concrete building yeah. and are bulletproof, right? They cost uh, 200 grand a piece, right? And that's what everybody wants to achieve. They all want one for their SWAT team. You know, these tank looking things you see, those are free. Those yeah. are like old Vietnam, like 80s era stuff that's mostly junk and, uh, they got to maintain them and pay. They want, everybody wants the Cadillac yeah. quarter million dollar MRAT, you yeah. know, it, it, it's, it, if it kept going, it's like, um, it's weird. Cause I lived through that era where, you know, it was just the equipment was free and then militarized, you know, start wearing all black, wear your tactical gear on your outside plates on the outside, you know, you're yeah. in full, like, you know, uh, Ramadi outfit, like you're going on yeah. a, on a patrol and you're yeah. going to encounter a bunch of jihadists. That's yeah. what everybody's dressed like now. Yeah. Yeah. Right? But why? What, what, I mean, you're not, you're not serving the public. You're ready to waste somebody. Well, exactly. You're, you're but, but they want line. you to look at them like that because you know what? Now you have a war on police and, 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 well, and who is the one really pushing it? It's your own, it's your own mayors. It's your yeah. own, you know, people in government. It's your own council members in cities yeah. that are pushing this war on police, that are putting these people at risk. What you're seeing right now is that the police have created all these alignments and relationships with these people, and now these people have thrown them under the bus. Yeah. There's a reason, right? These, the cops are being bit by the hand that feeds them right now. And there's a reason for that, and, and I think it's because it's about money. Mm -hmm. I think it's about money. Yeah. Well, uh, it, it you know it, it could be about anything, but mm -hmm. I I I I agree that, and I really I started noticing back in the '90s when I was in Alaska, I noticed these guys are dressing like you know like I used to dress when you know we'd go out on operations and stuff, yeah. and it's like what? Uh, why do you need to dress like that? Or you it's know, all, are you it's in all combat? On purpose. It's all per on purpose. But but it's but it's psychological anyway. Yep. But you know you've brought up a lot of very interesting points. And I, I agree with some of them, and some of them I'm going to kind of hold off judgment on. But um, I, I, do, um, I do want to ask you, um, with the coronavirus, what do you think? I mean, you seem to know a lot more about this than I do as far as Washington State. Yeah. What's the story with Jay Inslee and the coronavirus? Can you just tell us what you what think, think or what you know? Or I don't know anything. All I know is what I see. I mean, uh, I'm seeing what I basically am able to take in from a from a tactical and an investigative standpoint, and I can look at the movements of the people and what their gestures are, and what their what they look like on their face, and what they're talking about, what they're doing, and what their choices are, yeah. and how those choices reflect the common sense, how they reflect the science. And then I'm looking at DC and the president, and what he is. Um, yeah. saying and what his point of view and what their agenda is and I'm looking at things like this QAnon movement and I'm taking other information in from the alternative meeting I'm trying to put a big picture together when I'm looking at that so I'm looking at these people's moves I'm looking at what's happening I'm looking at coronavirus together too and I'm seeing that okay this isn't what we're being told it is this thing's way hyped up mm -hmm. it seems to well, be a bioweapon 
there seems to be an agenda with it and these people seem to be engaged in trying to promote and push whatever damage they can cause with it right right and that's what i'm seeing okay so what i've seen is that where i live i caught these guys the other day installing they were they said they're installing some kind of cable yeah they were installing the fi the facial recognition software microsoft right? facial yeah. recognition technology yeah and so that wasn't supposed to be implemented i know but so what they did and this is another lie that the media tells is they came out the other day and said microsoft is not going to sell that to any police department what they didn't tell you is that they've already sold it to washington state mm -hmm. and they're already installing it and they've already got the laws and and how it's supposed to be used and yeah. all that stuff so that idea that they're not selling it to these police departments but they want is a bunch of crap because they're selling it to the u.s government it's still getting installed mm -hmm. so anyway anyway that's another whole issue right there is the lying media yeah all right so well they're complicit too is you can tell by the way they report stuff okay Did uh, I, can you want to tell me an experience can i tell you an experience i just um okay um you can edit this, right? Yeah. Okay. Should we just stop for a minute so I can tell you something that happened with me and we can talk about it? No, I'll just cut it out. Okay, fine. So, I um, reported in the, uh, the governor's office to the Department of Justice um, for abuse of power, unlawful suspension of the Constitution. Is this Inslee? Yeah. Are you sure I can't? I can't. I can't show this. No, no, I want you to show. Okay. okay. I was just going to tell you yeah. about. But so, so I reported him. This was like a month ago, probably. So you reported who? Jay Inslee. Okay, good. Okay. For abuse of power, for uh, unlawful uh, suspension of the Constitution, all potential violations for all this contact trace plans and all this other stuff that they were going to do. And uh, and, and then, uh, so I don't know what happened with any of that. I, I talked to uh, people. They were going to turn it over to investigators, and I haven't got anything back. Who did you talk to? Uh, a Department of Justice office. It was uh, it was a head. It was a it was through the DOJ's um, coronavirus uh, fraud and abuse hotline. Okay. So um. And they knew who I was talking to right away when I said abuse of power. Yeah. They asked, oh, "Are you calling about Jay Inslee?" <laughs> and they said, "Yeah." How'd you know yeah. what state I was calling from? But anyway, so. Um, so when all this stuff started happening and stuff, and with um, hydroxychloroquine and all this other stuff. I pay attention to the news and look at the feeds and stuff like that and Mike Flynn and all this stuff. Our own news, local news, was ignoring all this stuff. They were trying to like keep everybody quiet from it. Yeah. So I contacted all the news media and first it was when that Officer Anderson came out mm -hmm. related to going against Port of Seattle Police and they fired him. Mm -hmm. So I called him on that. And this was right then and said I wanted to report breaking news because I'm pretty familiar with reporting news to the news stations because I tried when I was a cop and they helped suppress all that shit too. Mm -hmm. So anyways. So I contact these people and I start talking about Anderson and they know all about that. Yeah, they've got a story on that. And I say, well, about Mike Flynn and all this other stuff. And I start going into connections and all this stuff and common sense stuff. And, oh, oh, um, we contract with somebody for that, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Como was first and they, they got nervous when I asked about that and they weren't going to say it. And then I got to Cairo, the next one. Uh, I called them, same scenario, went through it. I'm talking to the guy, start bringing up Mike Flynn. He's like, we're... We're not, we only report um, local news. We don't do national. And so I got into some other stuff, and then he actually told me, um, I don't have time for this shit, and hung up on me. Uh-huh. Yeah. But uh, that was the news people. Mm -hmm. So um, that was part of it. But then the other really weird thing is I kept to, tried to keep calling stations, and I couldn't get through to any of them yep. after that. Yep. They, like, blocked me on all yep. of them. Yep, yep, yep. So they're all connected to each mm -hmm. other. Yeah. So you know that... Um, what is it? It's uh, Sinclair Media owns ABC. They own King Five. They own. All so that's of how they can block me from calling any of their stations. Yeah, I the mean, I can call, they don't but they own wouldn't is talk. Cairo. Yeah, but they own every radio oh. station. They own every TV station in Seattle in the whole Northwest market. So how do you get fair news out of that? You don't. You don't. Yeah. It's but what they do is they just play Fox News against go yeah. against you know the. Republicans against the Democrats, Macy's against Gimbel's. Pretty much. All right. So, well, let's, um, I don't want to keep you all day, Rich, but I want to, I have a couple more uh, questions I want to ask you. And, um, okay, so this, um, as far as the coronavirus and Gates, because Washington State is the epicenter, and I will tell you why. It shouldn't be. Kumo, the mass murderer Kumo, and he sent all those people into the nursing homes yes. that had 
uh, the coronavirus they, and, and mass murdered all those people. But not even just that, in the hospitals, they were putting people that had suffered strokes and stuff that yep. were recovering next to people that knowingly yep. had coronavirus so, and infected them. When this broke out, and you can check that my wouldn't videos. Wouldn't that be criminal conspiracy? When you check my videos, you can see my mother went to her doctor in Everett. Yeah. And she was complaining of like a cold or something. You got to go to the hospital. And where did they send her? Now, she has, I mean, she's got five kids with dozens of grandkids, yeah. right? So they sent her where? Right to that hospital where that guy was. The, to try the to first guy. Her. The first guy that was in Washington State with the coronavirus. So is that not, a, not another example of a criminal mom. conspiracy? Yeah. Well, I mean, how many how many examples do we got to show between when we can kind of say yeah. in good confidence, yeah, we think there's something going on. These people are complicit. Yeah. I mean, come and, on. And my, anyway, I did a video on it. Yeah. Uh, my brother was just livid. Um, I, I think he called that doctor and gave him a piece of his mind. But, but who's that doctor but taking orders from? No would doctor you, would do that in their right mind. Yeah. Unless somebody's telling them to do right. it. Right. So that's another question for the doctor. Why did you, why did you even send her there? Anyway. Yep. Um, so... So Inslee, his daughter works for Gates, or his daughter works for His wife's for the... Planned Parenthood. Okay. And Planned Parenthood as... He's is... got all the connections. Okay. So, mm. so really then, um, this is connected to Planned Parenthood. It's connected to Microsoft. It's connected to a vaccine. It's connected to Fauci. Yeah. And so all of this stuff just basically comes out of Washington State. I think all these people end up in jail. And my question is... How can Jay Inslee keep doing, I mean, I have a joke, um, and I hope it doesn't turn out to be true, but it is that the scientists have discovered the shortest uh, uh, span of time that goes even shorter than the nanosecond, and that is Jay Inslee's life expectancy after we vote him out of office. Well, maybe, but here's the thing, so, right? But, w but my point is, why is he doing all this stuff? Because he knows that he's going to be, I mean, He's going to be a target. Well, maybe, He's ruined so many lives, and so many of those people. One of them is going to be desperate. Did, did you ever think about so, this? That maybe that maybe that this plan that's in place, and whatever we're at the end result of, and whatever this is a bigger plan. Maybe these are the kind of plans that are implemented over fifty-year periods of time, and not not just over short election cycles and whatnot. Maybe maybe he's part of a bigger picture and a bigger yeah. plan. Well, my point is, do you think they're they're going to try to scrap the election? And, and let me just... I don't see how we can have it now. I think it's something's going to happen between now and then that's going to either postpone it or, or, or some other event's going to occur. Something is going to happen significant that makes it so likely we can't have an election because it's not going to be able to happen fairly or legally. And um, I just see that forecoming. That there's no way. Everything's going to escalate between now and then. Things are going to get hotter and worse, and people are going to be at people's throats worse. Next thing that comes is another shutdown for phase, you know. Yeah. I, I mean, they're not going to let things recover. They're going to keep doing damage. Yeah. So they're going to keep um, pushing this to a, a point where you're going to have a big explosion of things happen where they want chaos. They want war. They want people killing each other. Yeah. They want division. Yeah. Right? That's what they want. They want everything fucked up so they can try to commit fraud to win. Because yeah. that's all they got. Because I got a feeling with everything that we know now at this point that they're looking at nooses when this is done. It's not that they're going to jail. Exactly. If the government doesn't get them, the people will. Yeah. It's over. Okay. That's what I think. Yeah. So, um, so in the end, I mean, we've talked about a lot of stuff here, but... In the end, you, you think that the deep state, the Clintons, the, I guess there's no more Epsteins, the Carries, the Schiffs, that, um, and all the people in the FBI and CIA that have been doing these um, operations, whatever, you think this is just, they're using the American public as human shields yes, to protect right now. themselves. I think ultimately it comes out of this. I think FBI, CIA disbanded. I think you're going to see massive amounts of politicians in cuffs or arrested okay. uh, all the way down to the state level. And some you're going to see some sheriffs. I think you're going to see local city council members because what you're going to find out is that there's going to be a huge connection to all this human trafficking mm -hmm. and all this other shit. And there's a lot of paid off people or a lot of engaged people that are people of title and power that are part of it.
because this is you, you got to realize all oh, the, the child trafficking thing is a huge part of this whole thing that's been going on and that's what trump has yeah. been shutting down the, the reason why that it's something that uh, that we didn't know about as a society we got missing kids in this country like to the tens of thousands hundred thousands a year right other parts of the world, like eight million a year go missing yeah they don't find them you know why they don't find them and why nobody's really looking too hard because those are going to these elite rich people and they do bad things to these kids okay all right we well, can leave it at that yeah let's leave it at that because this is a family uh podcast well we're not going to talk about the things they do so rich um all right so let's uh let's kind of wrap this up here um so are are you you're done with law enforcement completely i am done never again will i ever engage in that Unless I hire you for security, uh, I would do I would do a private security for the right price. Okay, all right, we'll have to look into that. Okay, so this is kind of a off the cuff question, um, as if any of my other ones weren't. But so, Rich, tell me what you think. Your knowledge of Bigfoot is is Bigfoot. Well, actually, let me ask you this before I even ask you that: Is the do you think? that Bigfoot has a connection to UFOs? Uh, I'm not sure, but I think And do you likely. think do you think we could expect that Bigfoot, that with the disclosure of UFO stuff, that they'll eventually come around and if there's a tie and say, yeah, there is. Oh, yeah, no, no, I think it definitely, regardless if it is connected or not, it's coming out at the same time. It's eventually okay. going to come out with it. Okay. They can't not because it's just, there's too much out there. There's too many witnesses. Okay. It, it's eventually, they can't keep it a secret forever. Okay. They're going to have to come out. And then, you know, there's a lot of people that make money off Bigfoot, and they're probably not looking forward to that. Exactly. That's that's always yeah. been my thing is that. I could count quite a few people coming. on a couple of hands that probably wouldn't really want that to happen. Yeah. But who knows? All right. So here's your last question, Rich, and then you can go back to your life. Is Bigfoot a Republican, a Democrat, or independent? Independent. And why do you say that? Because I don't think that they align with anybody, probably. Is that right? They're Other just than out themselves. There. Yeah. Out They're there. looking out for their own survival and interests. Yeah. Kind of like yours truly. They don't have an agenda. Yeah. Kind of like yours truly. Mm -hmm. Well, Rich, I really appreciate you sitting down and, and talking with us. Um, so, uh, you know, I actually tried to get Melba Ketchum to, to kind of join us somehow. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's, the answer is always, always no. No, it's okay. But, um, but Rich, I have to thank you. A, a year of Encounters USA. You're the one that really turned me on to Melba, to the politis issue, um, to everything I pretty much knew about Bigfoot mm -hmm. and that whole question, especially in the Olympics, you, you really got me going on Encounters USA, so I'll always be eternally grateful to you. Well, thanks for letting so, me be on your show. Yep, well, I appreciate it. So, Rich Germo, again, um, thanks for your time. Thanks for sitting down in this lovely environment to do uh, this interview. So, take care, and now I'm gonna have to tell everybody, do you wanna say it or do you want me to? Oh, you can say it. All right. All right, everybody. Well, this is Matthew Hines, and I'm running for Congress in the 1st Congressional District in Washington State. I'm sitting with ex-Deputy uh, Sheriff Rich Germo, and we're talking about Bigfoot, we're talking about the government, and we're talking about what's going to happen in the future. So, if you are anywhere out in the woods like we are, or if you are suffering from an oppressive government, or if you're in downtown Seattle, or you work for a police department somewhere, or you're an African American, remember what I always say, always watch your back. Thanks for joining us on Encounters USA. Remember, if you have comments, please leave them in the comments section on YouTube and hit that subscribe button and ring that bell while you're at it. Don't forget, if you'd like to be a guest on Encounters USA, just send us an email at EncountersUSA, numeral one, at gmail.com. And just put podcast guest in the subject line. Now, please remember that all of the guests' opinions on Encounters USA are their own, and they do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the podcast host, 
ignore the podcast sponsors. So thank you, and don't forget, when you're out in the woods looking for aliens, Bigfoot, or Dogman, always watch your back.